Took my first swim in the little Qualicum River. Over there, actually. Uh, yeah, over there. Um, I've been setting up some ramps so I can actually walk along this log and cover more beach line more quickly if I need to. Just rudimentary things, primal things, right? <clears throat> Made a little circle of stones where someone had started one over there. And I uh, got myself a, you know, it's nice to practice my breaststroke without having to go anywhere. And uh, it's funny, I was a little bit cautious about going into the water. I don't know why. And then I just acquainted myself. You know, it's new. I mean, for those of us who don't jump in rivers every day. And uh, it's new, and I'm new to the area. So I always proceed with caution. And uh, just looking at the water, I saw some, I don't know if they're young salmon or what they are. <clears throat> and the bear, right? if you're native to this area, where you see salmon, the bear will fall. There's all kinds of good reasons to know that. And their myth, let's use that word carefully, connects salmon and bears. And connects salmon with whales. Ah, uh, the dragonfly. Thank you, my ally. And Thunderbird. It comes and eats the whale. And a Thunderbird is part male, or completely male, and completely female. Completely male and female energy. And a Thunderbird could be seen to be Divine Mother. And the Divine Mother may have male aspects, like a woman may have male aspects, but she's not the same as the Divine Father. Father, all his own. All his own. Father, all his own. And was a father ever born where a child was not born? And was a father born who was never a child? We're talking about Genesis today. We're talking about myth. We're talking about history. Take evolution, for instance. I don't believe that evolution is necessarily true, and I don't believe it's necessarily false. I'm fairly confident that it is false, but there's no point in bandying that belief around. I'd be interested in describing why it's false. And, uh, of course, there's all kinds of stupid things that don't work logically, and it's, it's basically sophistry. It's really, really good sophistry. You know, religion. And to try to nudge you from the maybe true to necessarily true. And that's a completely different state of mind. And the story of evolution offers up a lot of explanatory power. And so you can see where people's minds go back and go, well, let's see, where did this all come from? Oh, we're like animals, okay, we were walking around, did we just, that's it, that's it, we just came out of nowhere, and I see things growing around me, and animals give birth to children, I don't know, what if, what if some sort of long succession of biological events burped us out over millions of years? That's a great story. Right? And that womb would be full of death. Full of just, oh, how many fucking generations do you have to go where your fucking teeth fall out or rotting? You don't have dentists. You don't have anything. You fucking break your arm. And it's just like, oh, cut it off for fuck's sake. Right? Master in command or someone has a serious injury and they, they amputate. He's like a 15-year-old or a 12-year-old. And he's like his right-hand man and they just fucking amputate it. And he has to sit there and it's like little to no anesthetic. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Okay. Well, let's see. If, if that story can hold water, let's look at how the instrument, the primary instrument from that story, how it operates. And that's our minds. Okay, so we take that story. Great. It's a great way to examine our minds. When we look back over the last 10 years, 100 years, we look at the best minds in medicine and and physics, and chemistry, and biology, business if you want, politics, best minds everywhere, psychology, best minds, astrophysics, best minds, geology, best minds, all kinds of industrial genius. And then we include all the ways that people are mobilized to extremely violent and morbid effect to billions of people over the last several hundred years. And so this hypothesis, this third-order reasoning hypothesis, that 
intelligence can increase with a loss of intelligence. This is one of the basic principles of how I define a cybernetic society, is the, the appearance or even actuality of the increase, increase of intelligence. You could see survival prestige, profit of a company, more peace in the world, more knowledge for its own sake, uh, more equality, all that sort of stuff, comes at a considerable loss of intelligence. So however intelligent something is, and if we, if we have trouble in looking at the mass mind, we can just look at all of the greatest institutes that the mass mind relies upon, which basically speak for the mass mind. Basically, basically it's what all you motherfuckers are working for. And we look at it and go, okay, we successfully killed a billion non-combatants in the 20th century. Who knows how many more? How many families have now been made alcoholic, narcissistic, and sociopathic? Not a terminal illness, by any means, but terminally, unpredictably ignorant, at the same time that it becomes more malignantly aggressive. It's uh, the authoritarian training, particularly white breeding, but all the others as well. The authoritarian beings. So then we look at what people, what else people believe. Right? What else do they give their belief to? What else do they give other industry? What other stories? There are people walking around in this town, hundreds of them, that think that World War II is true. That World War I is true. And that Vietnam is true. And that Afghanistan and Iraq are true. That these business mythology Right, because think, something is religion, right, and then it's in business terms, and then it's in medical or educational terms or in cultural terms, right, and often mythological terms. But it started off as religion that became everything else. And as if that religion can become everything else, and that religion can claim the power of God. The idea is for religion or for cancer, right, to be able to affect everything else to have as much influence over everything else. And that's the God that people trust in. The God that gets into everything so they can own it completely. Just has to get into everything, doesn't it? Right? Before they got into your cell phone, they got into our minds, they got into our heritage in a big, big way, you might say. I mean, you get Elon Musk, right? It's a business fiction to keep that part of the mind to the space industry and the industrialist alive. It doesn't matter whether he's actually an actual industrialist or not. You never see anyone else sitting beside him, which is a little odd. Isn't it? Why should a leader in any sphere sacrifice the qualities of leadership that extend to our lands? Like, hey, question your government. Always a good idea. Any world where it's not a good idea to question your government isn't one it's worth building spaceships in, even if we can actually build spaceships. Right? No, nothing wrong with questioning your government. Nothing wrong with that at all. Question everything. Hey, motherfucker, why? Explain it to me. Question your doctor. Why? Give me a reason. They quite rarely give any reason for anything. And what reason they give isn't terribly reasonable, in as much as their intelligence has lost a good deal of intelligence in general, but also your intelligence, because you aren't encouraged to give it much of the intelligence with which you were born, but the intelligence that you're trained to give it at a loss to your intelligence. And so you see how the capillary action of the trickle-down economy, of the religious extraction of man industry, is extremely intelligent. But no one studies it. There are people walking around who think World War II is true. It was a business. It was a religion translated into a business, translated into a war, in that people think of as wars as one side fighting with another. <laughs> Maybe at the football game, you know, but not in wars.
right? There's a store locally that does raw food, and it's called Raw Authentic. I'm not quite sure how authentic it is. We could have War Authentic, right? War is War Authentic. Everything about war is War Authentic. It's certified War Authentic. These are educated people who still believe that Churchill was any better than Hitler, or Hitler was any worse than Churchill. So the sense of good and evil dramatically portrayed. This is a massive ritual sacrifice. It's a religious event. Think of how Hitler stands. You don't have to fucking take the evil out of Hitler. You don't have to put all Hitler's supposed evil into Churchill to sort of appreciate the religious scales of the event. Then we will get them in the trenches. I made a film where I, I showed Churchill's most passionate speeches next to Hitler's most passionate speeches, and I toggled between one and the other, and they sound exactly the same. Right? And it corrects in your brain. It corrected my brain. It was part of my school, correcting the brain. There's good over here, evil over here. That looks actually a lot more evil than good, and that looks probably not quite as evil as it appears to be. And just as evil as the other side, you know. Business. A religion become a business, become a war. A religion you don't hear about, you don't study, it's not in any of your textbooks. When you think about the things people are walking around believing, right? Sam Harris, a prominent American intellectual and atheist, a leader, if you want, of a new wave atheism in the United States, wrote The Moral Landscape and other things. A neuroscientist. Very eloquent. Very eloquent. That man thinks and talks in, in probably the most methodical and unequivocal way I've ever heard a man talk. Very precise. You want that kind of guy to be a neurologist in many respects. You do. And he believes that 19 hijackers from, from Afghanistan destroyed a city block of one of the most heavily defended parts of the world in the history of the world. Now, he may not believe that. In fact, I would like to credit him with the intelligence of not believing it, but he says that he does, in as much as I suppose it doesn't do him any advantage to say that he doesn't. So we're just going to sort of let him off the hook as far as being a dirty rat, dirty bastard, but we'll say that it is remarkable. And so sometimes when people reveal what they say, and they reveal in what they don't, or perhaps even can't say. You can see it whichever way you like, I suppose, when it comes down to it. He's as good or as evil as you want him to be. You know, I try to apportion my evil only when absolutely necessary. I reserve it for doctors and teachers, Christians, Jehovah Witnesses, and Muslims. Oh. People who invade my privacy. Yeah. I've, I've seen two sets of people turn tail when they see me sitting over here. I must put out quite the energy. Uh, people like to walk here. They like to walk along the edge and, and feel like they have some privacy. And probably having been here by themselves, they, you know, I think it's a nice enough place. And there's few enough places like this where a lot of people can access it. I don't think people should be turning away when they see someone. And I certainly don't want to set that trend. But I don't want to wave at them either. People are people in this part of the world. This is not Europe. People are very shy and scared about other people. I mean, when I went in the, the river, I had to keep my shorts on. You know, I would have loved to have taken them off, but you know, sure enough, a lady came along, and it wouldn't do to be naked. You know, she can probably fantasize fucking me every way but Tuesday. But God forbid I should be unclothed. It's all too much for them, you see. Now, there are people walking around who believe that World War II and World War I were not a business. And they probably still sit up at night with their rum and their whatever, or their scotch, and, uh, and watch the History Channel or watch old tapes of World War II or Patton. Right? We're not trying to make fun of them here. We're just... I have just uh, went to a garage sale of two local wealthy people who looked me up and down and dismissed me within the first six seconds of meeting me. But we're still terribly polite. And what that's integrating as a brain level is that they've sacrificed intelligence in order to get what they have. So I, I don't have to read books on sociology to know that there are wealthy people who have paid the ultimate price.
that live around me every day. That's all. It's just very clear, quick. Mm. And I like it when people tell me that they have lowered brain function. And they're never, they're never really shy about telling me that. So I, I respect it, you know, as much as I can. It's a little hard to be around, I must say. I would love to see people who are wealthy, who are like really together. I guess if I saw that, I would, I would tell you. I, I see animals, I see people, I see things in the world. There's some great things. I don't know. I just, I guess we don't, uh, we don't swim in the same circles. I don't see a lot of families come down here. I don't know what they do all day. Ah, oh, my ally is back, the butterfly. So they believe a lot of things. And they walk around with those beliefs, and they walk around. Uh, I came to this garage sale, and I managed to go see some of the books, and I started looking at the children's literature from, like, the 1940s and 50s, because they'd kept it in the family. And I read one, and it was an uncle telling his nephew that in order to cross bridges in life, and in order to make the bridge in the story come down, you had to start tell a story that isn't true. And the book was all about the concept of telling stories that aren't true in order to get forward in life. I shit you not. I shit you not. Another one was just Sam showing Sally how to build a car, because Sally really wants a car. So Sam's going to build a car. What Sam's really going to do is like crank one off, then build a car, and then crank one off in the car, and then crank one off later for Sally. <laughs> but of course, Sally actually sexually matures faster than Sam does. So when she says, build me a car, it's actually sexual. Right? Girls don't ask boys to build them things. Right? They don't. Young girls don't ask boys to, to do shit from them unless they're bossy little bitches. If, if they're having a healthy life, right? they don't have to ask. They might do something together if their minds resonate on that. Right? A child shouldn't have to ask a child for anything other than pass me the Lego. They shouldn't be telling each other what to do at all. And I wonder how many problems in families is because different siblings start telling other siblings what to do. I would never allow that in my family. Ever. I would never allow myself to raise children who ever even thought to do that. It seems like a white man's thing to be telling other people what to do. So, you know, Sally is actually a sexually more mature young girl. And Sally is making a sexual uh, is it ovation toward Jack. Jack off in the story. He's going to build her a car. Not a home, a car. Right? A phallic symbol. Build me a representation of your penis, Jack. The better to take us into the future. It's really very sub-animal. Right? White culture is extremely uh, psychologically castrated. It really is. When you look at the creativity of nature, when you look at the myth and the life and in life within life, and the medicine and the voice of the animals, and the animal of man, and all that is masculine and feminine and strong, and keeping everything alive with the capacity to communicate life. Ah, like this. That's what men used to do. Right? It didn't matter what you did, you kept everything strong. Right? And you didn't you didn't burn bridges, and you didn't make bridges appear by telling stories that aren't true. And what the fuck does that mean anyway, a story that isn't true? Because every story has truth to it. A story that isn't true isn't a fucking story, it's a lie. And there are lots of lies that can be in a story, depending on how it's told, why it's being told, like these stories. The stories of Jack and Sally, and the bridge and the uncle, right? Is that, are these stories that aren't true? Do you think the child reading that is going to be distinguishing what is or is not true or what, what they're really being asked to boot? Story that isn't true? Isn't that just like telling a story? Probably. Maybe it's safe to assume that. 
It's just telling a story. It's not lying, it's just telling a story. Hmm, you see where we're going here? And then if someone comes along and tells a different story, oh, they're the enemy, we shoot those people, they're telling a different fucking story. And how many clods, how many lumpheads line up on the battlefield of life, ready to do war with their brothers and sisters because they're simply under the influence of a story that's actually fucking ruined their brain's capacity to tell stories, to learn from stories, to suck the truth out of stories, and to see the potential for danger in stories. We want strong stories. Hmm? I can't imagine a stronger story than a story of salmon, and bear, and whales. Right? All that is man and all that is woman feeding the people. And in their hunger and in their strength, raining water and, and everything that rains down. Because the rain tells us about everything that's raining down on us. That we're in a massive circulatory system. That nature is our brain and our brain is in nature. Nature is our brain and our brain is in nature. We are in a Genesis relationship. We're in the beginning all of the time. Feel that. So you want to talk about the beginning. You want to look at the instrument you're using to talk about the beginning. Aren't you? You want to look at that instrument. That instrument began in a mother's womb. You might want to look. God, I'm even rudimentary glance at the medical literature should tell you that a lot of types of, types of shit happen in the story of the actual flesh and blood instrument that I'm using. The flesh and blood spirit that I'm using. And when I swim in this river, I'm swimming in the spirit of this river. And I'm giving my spirit to the river. And the river said to me, take water here. Purify. Let, let the element of water touch you. Let the spirit of water run over you. Let it cleanse your body and take something from you that one, I don't need anymore, and two, the life around me needs. So, need in every change has been transferred from one place to another. The satisfaction of a need has been moved from one place to another. And that's a good story. Stories that have the persistence of the dignity attributed to needs that move everything from one place to another and move satisfaction from one place to another. That's a good story. So be careful about the stories that you're told, about everything. Because it's just the world is saturated in stories that aren't true and are not told to be true and are told to teach you how to tell things that aren't true as though they're necessarily true. It's not... Uh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm, getting I'm getting a little caught up in it. Uh, it's a it's a mind twisting type of thing, isn't it? It's very it's, it's it's there's lots of healing that needs to be done. Right, lot have all your intelligence, have all your evolution if you want, but don't tell me that it should cost my mind. Don't tell me it should cost my voice, my heritage, or my story. And I don't care what fucking lip service is paid to respecting the aboriginals and the past and making up. <laughs> this isn't happening, my friends. This isn't happening. Are you, you think the world outside you is in a state of armistice with respect to all that is aboriginal? Fuck me. You don't believe these motherfuckers. Don't believe these motherfuckers. They've been lying for thousands of fucking years. This is military grade bullshit everywhere. Right? To save me the, the hours I could take enumerating every single fucking example and how they all work together and have been internalized into our own brain function and what we say and do not say in our families. And blessed be every family, but the patterns of extraordinarily remarkable lapses in empathy and comprehension and independence of mind. Independence of the mind. Independent from the business of culture happening around you, the business of war, the business of medicine, and the religion of all of those fucking businesses. The religion of religion. And all the acting people do. All the acting. Oh, and then you act and you lose your sense of what you're acting for anymore. How do you even know when you're not acting? What are you acting like today? 
What are you being told to act like today? How often have you been told to act a certain way? Why? Why should children be told to act a certain way? Why should children be told how to behave? My children aren't going to see these fucking stories, and I'm glad I took a look at them, and I met the people who were brought up on these fucking stories. It's propaganda. And when you look at children's literature in the past, it's all propaganda. White propaganda, Buddhist propaganda, I don't care, it's propaganda. What about today's literature? Does that look I like propaganda because the propaganda improves, right? It has an influence, and if it has an influence, lots of fucking violent things happen, and men get more castrated again, and women have more of a load that takes more of their femininity away, and, and more and more to their, to their pleasure, because fuck men, I don't want to be a woman anymore, or maybe I'm a woman trapped in a man's body, or a man trapped in a, in a woman's body, and it's not a man's world. Look at this motherfucker. It's not a man's world. It's a tortured man's world. It's a tranny world. Hello. It's been a while since I've seen someone brilliant as you. Yeah. You're brilliant. Bloody brilliant. Bloody brilliant. Oh! And it tickles. <laughs> Bloody brilliant tickling. Oh my God. Why are you on my stomach? That is a part of the body where I've had a little bit of... Well, a lot's been going on. Maybe you can uh, take a look at it, doctor. What do you say? Oh, you're just going to move around a little bit? Move your antenna? That's intelligence, eh? Oh, wow. So, that's intelligence. We know for sure it's intelligent, don't we? Wow. Let's lean back. Lean all the way. We know it's intelligent. You can fucking eat me alive a bear or nature, but it's intelligent, isn't it? The substance of nature is the substance of intelligence. It's the pre-material of life. You don't have to make it God's... Oh, he just flew away. Wow, he just did a base jump. It's so fucking awesome. He just jumped off it, fell, and then started flying. Shit, man. What a fucking boss bug. It's intelligent. It's the substance of life. It doesn't have to be God's or anything. It's certainly not the government's, but the government's extremely intelligent. And it's a business many businesses, many businesses that are organized. And that organization goes into everything, everything, to keep it all organized. You ever tried to organize a couple lies? Right? You've got to go all in, right? Believe the lie. What does is, what is George Cassandra say on Seinfeld? You've got to believe the lie. Right? And he would know a lot about lying because he's an actor, isn't he? Right? He acts like he's one of the only Semites in the world. Right? which is actually part of an anti-Semitic religion known as Judaism. It's all anti-Semitic, all of it. Right? Another time we'll talk about that. It's all anti-Semitic. They accuse you of being an anti-Semite for simply noticing the truth of their religion. They should give you a medal. They should give you a gold star. A star of David. Wow, good for you. You moved to the head of the class. There's a guillotine right at the front. You stupid anti-Semite. I'm not a stupid anti-Semite. I'm the best anti-Semite of all. You should make me an honorary Jew. I should be a general. I'll lie on your behalf. I'll lie like a motherfucker. So, how much, you know, the, the lies that were surrounded by, the world is all in. And it gets you to be all in. Look how hard people work. They're all in for the lie. They're all in to the business that all businesses are part of and the religion that all religions and businesses are a part of in whatever terms they need to be. Here's the medical part of the business. We've got some medical terminology for you because we've got some more shit to sell you in the name of medicine and you believe in medicine, right? You look up to medicine. You look up to the doctors of medicine like you look up to the captains of industry, the doctors of medicine, the captains of industry, the doctors of medicine, the captains of industry. And isn't it great? All that civilization, all that intelligence that came out of the goo, that came out of fucking hundreds of thousands of years that you wouldn't want to fucking live in, in your, on your best day. Right? We should bow down to them. Right? The womb of Kali, of infinite death, has given birth to something that has become a little more merciful. Its clemency is is distributed in, in a wider and more sophisticated manner. Is that, is that not accurate? Are we not supposed to worship the modern world? Right. Picasso, is he, a, is he a mentally healthy man? 
Was he even a man? Who knows? It's hard to tell anymore. We might have to sort of go back and start figuring out what a man is. That might be good. I'm pretty sure I know what a woman is. Soft. Strong. The strongest, the strongest of us is a woman. But not every woman is the strongest of us. That's the problem. The strongest of us is a woman. Right? Let us give it to the Mother Earth who has sustained so many years of being defiled. And yet she gives bountiful medicine to us all every day. Get to know that mother. Hmm? Now, is that a mother who deserves to be a cavity from the machines of war? Hmm? Now, in talking about the genesis of life, we should talk about the genesis of war, shouldn't we? Among men and women, Adams and Eves, or cross, uh, appropriately cross-gendered people, <laughs> for the fuck's sake. Did you find my other testicle, honey? Where does war come from? Nobody believes that shit, do they? War has come, I've come to these lands before and they will come here again. Be sure of that. People talk about the tsunami or the big earthquake here on the west coast. What about war? We sure bring a lot of it to other people, don't we? I've had doctors declare war on my body. Many doctors do not expect us to be aware of ourselves. And we're well trained. Think very carefully before you walk into a medical clinic. That's all. If there's something wrong with being incredibly suspicious, then there's something even worse going on. I don't know what's worse, that doctors believe some of the things they've told me or that they don't honestly believe them. I was diagnosed with cancer a year ago. Oh my God, I can't take it anymore. It's like, I already know I've got cancer. The world's got cancer. I'm surrounded by cancer. I fight it all the time. The cure for cancer is called every day. That's the cure for cancer. Enjoy it. Live your life. Right? There's not a creature on this earth that doesn't know it's going to die on some level and be born again. Everything dies. But as you've probably heard before, not everything truly lives. Thankfully, death is a concentration of life. No matter what happens, eventually, we will all truly live. I've left my body. It's truly invigorating. When you don't have all the lower chakra survival shit to work out. All the anxiety. All the looming threats. Which brings up a good subject. How threatened are we, really? How threatening is the world I describe? And I've, I've never really...